just stand to your feet with me. We're just going to pray. Hallelujah. God, we're just we're so grateful, God, for who you are. Oh, yes. We're so grateful for your presence here yes, in this place, God. Yes, yes. We're so grateful for the worship, God, that has prepared our hearts and our minds, God. But, God, we're so grateful for hearts that are sensitive to you, God, sensitive to hear your word, God. Yes, Father. Sensitive to hear why. You would have us here, Father God. Yes. We thank you, God, for the truth that's being spoken today, Lord God. We thank you for those who are here, those who are making their way yes, out, and even those Father. who are unable to yes, be here, God. We thank you for this going out across the internet, Lord God, and yes, for all the people yes. who are here and have find themselves impacted. Father God, we pray right now, Lord God, no distractions. Lord God, we pray right now, clarity, Father God. We pray right now, Lord God, that you would speak clearly, God, none of me, but all of you, Father God. Overflow, Lord God, into your people, Lord God. Overflow into their lives and their situations, God. Speak to each and every one of us personally today, here in this place and time. Father, we thank you for it. We love you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Why y'all in your feet? Before you make a seat, I know y'all tired. Y'all been worshiping the Lord. Oh, all right. Amen. I want you to I want you to turn to your neighbor. Grab their hand. Just take one one neighbor, grab their hand, look at them, and say, Why are you here? Wow. Wow. Alright, turn, find somebody else. Turn, find it. You know we do this three times now. Why are you here? Why are you here? Look at and say, why are you here? Find the third person. Right now, when you find the third person, make it somebody you didn't come to church with. Look them deep, deep, deep in the eyes and ask them, why are you here? Why are you here? Now, hold on, 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 and tell them you're here to win. You're right here to win. roll up our sleeves and we're going to go to work. Now we have been looking for the last two weeks at the question of why. Why am I here? Why am I here in the fellowship of Jesus Christ? Why am I here? Why am I here in the state of Georgia? Why am I here? Why am I saved? Why am I saved? See some of us got saved because we was like I don't want to go to hell. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm, just, I'm just gonna keep it 100 with you today. I, I, I've been real the whole time, which I would not uh -huh. not come at you any other way. Right. Some of you guys say because you was like, I don't want to go to hell. That's right. Somewhere, a pastor, man of God, man of woman, God got up there and told you that hellfire and brimstone, darkness and torture for the rest of eternity mm -hmm. sounded like a terrible thing. And you said, you know what? I agree. <laughs> I don't know what to do that. They told me that heaven was a place of worship and light and greatness and God. And you was like, yeah, that, that sounds just a whole lot better. And so you came down here to the altar. You raised your hand and you fell to your knees and you repeated a prayer. And that's why you say, you never really developed a relationship with God. You never really walked in your gift and you never really realized that all the things that you were really, really good at when you were younger, all the things that you were really, really good at now, all the influence and the leadership and the places God has took you to and took you through was for a reason. And so we started off with our first sermon and we looked at what we call tipping points. Right? And we went to the story of, of Joseph and we saw how God gave Joseph a dream as right, a young man. Right. He gave him a dream, but that dream didn't start uh, all the good things in his life that he thought might happen. Right? Joseph was a man who found himself with a dream of greatness in a pit. He found himself with a dream of greatness being sold into slavery by his brothers. He found himself with a dream of greatness looking like he was finally breaking through, right? He was in Potiphar's house and everything was good, only to find himself going to jail. He found himself with a dream of greatness, interpreting dreams, thinking, yeah, this guy's got the king's ear, only to be forgotten about. All right. And so we realize as we look at this that life is full of these points, these tipping points in our own lives. 
That's right. That we ourselves will have a dream of greatness, something that God has put inside of us, and yet as we continue to go through life, we seem to run into obstacles. Oh, okay. Things right. that prevent us yeah. from accomplishing what we wanted. Things that cause us to doubt whether or not that dream actually ever happened. Things that cause us to wonder where is God in the midst yeah. of us. But if we remember our scripture passages, we looked at it and we realized that the Bible told us everywhere that Joseph went, God was there. Oh, okay. So when Joseph yeah. was in the pit, God was there. Yes. When Joseph arrived in Egypt, God was there. When Joseph went to jail, God was there. He was waiting for him. Every single place where it seemed like yeah. it yeah. yes. 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 And the thing to remember as we look and consider why is that every single place for your life where it seems like God is furthest away All right. is actually right where he is. Oh, okay. Waiting for you to arrive. Yeah. Waiting and preparing the way for you to arrive. Waiting and preparing so that you can thrive in a place where it doesn't seem like you ought to be able to thrive. Mm -hmm. and so we saw this in the story of Jesus. We saw these tipping points. We, we, we were encouraged to go home and reflect on the tipping points in our own life. What are the things that has happened in our life that brought us from whatever state we were in to Georgia? What are the things that happened in our life that brought us from wherever we were to where we are right now? Mm -hmm. What are the circumstances and situations that caused us to finally be like, you know what, God, you come in and take control. I can't do it anymore. I can't figure it out on my own. I need somebody bigger than me to work on my situation. And hopefully you reflect on that. That was two weeks ago. But last week, what did we talk about? Anybody remember what we talked about? Last week we talked about vision. Mm -hmm. And we put in parentheses, we put perspective. Right. Right? Because so many times we talk about vision and we say everybody needs to have vision. Have vision of what's coming. <laughs> have vision so you don't, you know, run into the wrong thing or whatever. But I encourage us to consider that vision is about perspective. And so, so many times we neglect to have an understanding of why God is doing what he's doing in your life. All right. See, the things that you're going through, the things that you find yourself dealing with aren't by accident. They aren't just random. They aren't just a mistake. That everything that you're going through, God is using that to prepare you for where he's going to take you. Oh, yeah. See, there's nothing that God can take you into and just drop you there, and you'll succeed if he hasn't prepared you in advance. Right. And he can't prepare you in advance without you going through some things to get there. All right. And so God gives us vision, and he gives us perspective, but sometimes we don't take it. Sometimes we don't look at it. Sometimes we don't want to hear about perspective when it's hard. See, we don't want the we don't want the truth to be that the situation that we went through that was uncomfortable and wasn't fair and wasn't friendly and wasn't what we expected our dream to look like. We don't want to admit that that might be how God prepared us right, when we got there. Right. We can go back and see this again in the story of Joseph. I'm sure as a young man, he thought to himself the idea of his brothers and his father and his mother bowing down to him was a great thing. He probably was a little bit prideful. He probably thought of himself a little bit extra, mm -hmm. a little bit special. And it didn't help when his dad gave him a coat of many colors and he could strut around talking right. about, look at me, oh, look right. at what I do, mm -hmm. look at me. Had a little swag to him. Everybody, who, who got a little swag? You yeah. got a little swag? <laughs> I got a little swag. I don't know about you, but I, I carry myself with a little swag. Yeah. I am comfortable in who I am. All and right. I imagine that if I dreamed that I was going to be a king and okay. I was going to have people bow down to me, right. that I might That's take right. that swag to just another level. All right. All right. All right. right. I might walk around thinking that my stuff don't stink. Anybody okay. know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. I'm just going to keep it 100 with you because right. I just believe yeah. that if I can connect with you, you might have... Somebody out there might know what I'm talking about. And oh, even if you don't apply to you, maybe you got a friend. Okay. Right? Maybe you might know somebody who's going through that circumstance. And so we see that with perspective, God had to humble Joseph. Yes. He had to humble him. He had to teach him. You got to keep your dreams inside sometimes. You can't just go around telling All everybody right. your dream because right. not everybody can handle what you're saying to okay. You got to pick the people who are going to be close to him. He had to learn these lessons. I'm pretty sure while Joseph was sitting in the pit wondering, my goodness, my brother's just tossing me. Right. Uh -huh. My goodness, I wonder what's going to happen next. I think when he got to Egypt and he was doing well, he was like, yeah, I'm on my way up. And all of a sudden, I'm in jail. What yeah. is going on? Uh -huh. uh -huh. Where did this come from? I'm pretty sure he may have reflected on God and said, I had to humble you. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, peace be still. All hey, right. just all right. trust all in right. the Lord no matter yeah. the situation. See, he had to get to a point like Paul where he could be like, I'm content no matter that's the circumstances right. or the situation yeah, right. I find myself. I've been rich. I've been poor. I've, I've been, been healthy. Right. I've been weak. Right. I've been happy. Right. I've been sad. But I'm content because I know God is in control. Yes. We're talking about vision. Mm -hmm. We're talking about perspective. Yes. Well, all of that is designed, again, to answer the question of why. Why am I here? 
Why am I a part of this ministry? Why are we talking about doing big things? Why are we talking about moving from here to somewhere else? Why are we talking about going where God has called us to? We're going there because God has called us to win. Oh, happy We're going there because God has called us to win. And I want to I want to come to you all. I want to share with you all what God's placed in my heart. I promise that um, I won't be before you long. There's just three points that I want to make. But I want to encourage you um, that winning may look a little different than what you expect. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Winning may look a little different than what you expect. See, generally speaking, when we hear the term win, right, what do we think of? Success. We think of success. Money, fame. We think of money, fame. We think of, of, of celebrations. We think of everybody recognizing our victories and giving us accolades. We think of um, commercials. We think of what, your winners. They are, they're the people people know. They're the heroes. They're the ones you want to be like. So a lot of times in our minds, we have this idea that this is what winning looks like. We say, God, give us a victory. God, give us a win. And then yet when we get it, it doesn't, it doesn't look like All right, it to, All right. Or it comes with more problems than we expected yeah. it to. Mm. Or it's not exactly what we thought it would be. But I think we need to redefine what it means to win. All right. I think we need to reconsider what this needs to look like. And in light of where God is taking us here in the fellowship, I think this is very important from a foundational perspective. So let's just get into it. Three points today. Why, why are we here? We're here to win. We're here to win, number one, at life. Okay. All right. We're here to win at life. Right? And that seems like kind of general. Minister Justin, what do you mean? What do, we, what do you mean at life? Listen, every single one of you has been gifted by God for a purpose. That's right. Yeah. Right? Each and every one of you has a gifting inside of you. Now, the, now half the question lies in, what is my gifting? Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? If I don't know my gifting, then I'm already, I'm already out of the fight. Right. 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 If, I, if, I'm, if I'm over here on the youth ministry, trying my very best to get these kids to, to do this thing, whatever it is, and I just don't realize that's not my gifting, I'm just mad. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm just frustrated. Right? I'm just sitting there like, oh my gosh, this never works out. Church is horrible. These kids are knuckleheads. Oh my, this is the worst thing ever. And the kids, meanwhile, are like, I just, oh, who's, who's teaching today? Dear Lord Jesus. <laughs> 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 I'm sick. Oh, I can't make it to church today. Any and everything, right? Because it isn't, your gifting is not matching up. Right. So it, of That's course, right. is important that I acknowledge that I have a gifting. But understand that every person has a gifting. Yes. Right. There's no reason that you come here and you just sit here day after day, Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, month after month, and never get involved. That's right. God is giving you a gifting, and he intends for you to use that gifting to win at life. Lord have mercy. When we use our gifts, our gifts bring God glory. Amen. Our gifts give God praise. Why? Because he's the one who created you, and he put inside of you something that would cause great things to happen for his name. That's right. What, is, what does minister Justin mean for that? So let's say you have the gift of healing. This kind of makes sense, right? Lord, has gifted me with the ability to heal. I see somebody sick. I pray for them. They get well, mm -hmm. right? Amen. Right? right? So then they're like, oh my gosh, I got healed. Thank you. And we say, no, all power, praise, and glory to God. God. Yes. Right? Yes. So yes. now God is glorified because of the gift of healing that has been put inside of you that you use. Does Amen. that make sense? Everybody's still yes. with you. Yes. All right? So there's nothing real complicated there. God has given each and every one of us a gift. So some of you may be gifted with singing. God to give you the voice that when the when you start singing, the birds just join right along with you. All of nature just seems to harmonize. The trees start swaying back and forth. The presence of God just comes down and inhabits what you're doing. That's a gifting that God has given you. Amen. It's for his glory. You may be given the gift of servant, of service. You, you, you just see things that nobody else sees. You see the little piece of trash on the floor. You see the, the lady struggling to get out of the car. You see things before they even happen. You're like, hey, I think we're going to need this. And you, they're like, what are you talking about? We, and then the, wow, where did that come from? And you I'm have the gift of service. God is putting you the ability to just move yes, in places. Yes, People yes. would never have even seen the things that you see. You see the world differently. Maybe you have the gift of comedy. You can make people laugh. The Bible tells us laughter is good for the soul. Yeah, you have yeah. just a way of looking at the world. Maybe somebody else in the world thinks that's a little bit twisted, but that's just the way you see it. And it's funny, and people laugh, and they make jokes. That is a real gift. You have the gift of artistic expression. You can take a paintbrush, you can take a pen, you can take a piece of paper, you can take words, you can harmonize, you can put poetry. You, can, you, you affect people. It's a gifting God has given you. The question is, are you using it oh, for his glory? Right. Are you using no, it for his glory? And if you understand that you have a gifting and that what you have is not just talent, as the world would say, you're not just good at it, as the world would say, but it's actually what God has put inside of you to use it for his glory, and you start walking in that, you will see it magnified. 
Why? Because every time you give God glory, he draws people into it. Oh, hallelujah. Every time you lift him up, he draws other people to it. Amen. So when you are like, man, I'm out here struggling. I got mad talent. I don't get why people aren't seeing my stuff. I don't get why I'm not getting any followers on Gram. I don't get why people aren't liking me on Facebook. I don't get why my Twitter account's not blowing up. It's because you've not yet begun to elevate God to his place. Uh oh, oh hallelujah. Maybe you've been given the gift of leadership. Maybe that's what God has put you in place to do, to lead people. But you are leading people based on your own skills. See. You are leading people based on what you learned in school. Uh -oh. You are leading people trying your best and wondering why you are leading but nobody is following. Oh, okay. have Try giving God the glory. You are put in place for a reason to give God the glory. So, listen, understand that where you're currently being used at is not where God intends for you to be used at. All right. All oh, oh, right. Where you're currently being used at is not where God intends for you to be used at. Mm. I guarantee this. This is the reason why I know this is true. Because where the fellowship of Jesus Christ is right now is not where God intends for us to be. All right. All right. Thank you, God. This is not where Thank God intends for us to be. Like, this building is nice. Don't get me wrong. The chairs hopefully are pretty comfortable and everybody feels like the temperature is not too bad. Now, I'm a little warm up here because I'm, I'm doing work. But, you know, hopefully everybody else is feeling pretty good right now. What God intends for this ministry is not what you see here on your left and your right. All right. See, God intends for so much more of an impact, which means that where you currently are in your gifting, you're not being used to the fullest that oh. God intends for you. There's not enough people in here for you to be helping and working and ministering to for God's glory to be the way it's going to be. All right. See, some of you, you may just be like, no, no, Mr. Justin, you're just talking right now. But understand that God is gifting you and teaching you and training you right now for where you're going to be. Right. He has not called you according to where you are, but he's called you according to where you're going to be. Now, some of you are saying, yes, you don't know my situation. Uh -oh. You don't know my struggles. Uh -oh. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I've been through. Mm. Amen. Understand. I understand totally where you're coming from. But if you trust God, that's right. and that's ultimately the question at the end of the day. Do you trust God enough that when he calls you where you are and says move to where he's going, you'll believe him. All right. Now, how do I know this is true? Well, because it's in the Bible. All right. So listen, in the book of Judges. Nope, not going there yet, Rachel. Thank you, though. In the book of Judges, chapter 6. Write this one down. It's not going up on the board. Judges, chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. The Bible tells us that the angel of the Lord shows up and he speaks to a man who is hiding in a wine press, mm -hmm. pressing out some wheat. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Now, this man is named Gideon. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that when the angel of the Lord shows up to Gideon, he doesn't say, hey, Gideon, how you doing? He says, hi, mighty man of valor. He calls him a mighty man of valor. So he calls him not according to what his current situation is, but according to the things that are inside him. Yes. And so when God is calling you and he's put a dream inside of you and he's encouraged you and he says, this is what you're going to do. It's not based on your current situation, but it's based on where you're going to be. All right. All right. If we continue and we stay there um, in the same book, just a couple of chapters later, there's a woman by the name of Deborah. Yes. All right. And Deborah right. is sitting under an oak tree, oak tree, the Bible says, when we're introduced to her in the story. So her situation is that she's the prophetess, but she's sitting under an oak tree relaxing. Okay. The word of God comes to a man by the name of Barak and says, right. hey, you're going to overthrow the enemy. Yeah, Barak yeah. comes and finds her right there. So she goes from being a prophetess to a prophetess warrior. Right. Right. God right. raises her not from where she currently is to what she's going to do. Yeah. And so many times right. that's how it is in the Bible, in the story of Abraham. We find Abraham, a man who's grown, a man who's married, a man who has a semi-successful right. life. He's mm -hmm. moved out. God says, this is not who you are. Mm. You are a father of many nations, that's but I've right. got to move from where you are to where I'm going to be. Know that God will say to Abraham, hi, father of many nations, let me show you your vision and plans. Abraham couldn't have handled it. He says to him, get up and move. Right, right, he right. says to him, get up and move. That's all that he says to him. Get up and move. Yeah. And so many times God is saying to us, get up and move. And we're like, oh, Lord, mm. <laughs> Let, let's just pump the brakes right there. Right. The car is not moving, but let's just pump the brakes right there. Like, come on, man. At the end of the day, God is calling you not based on where you are. Man. That's right. But based on where you're going to be. Oh, Consider yeah. why it was so hard for people to accept Jesus. For 30 years, Jesus was just the prophet. Oh, yes. That's right. For 30 years, Jesus doesn't do any miracles. For 30 years, Jesus is a healing people, at least not that the Bible records. 
He's not doing miracles. The only time that we even get a glimpse that Jesus might be something more than just a normal, regular person is when he stays behind and he's in the temple reading. And people are like, wow, where does this come from? Other than that, we just see Jesus quietly the carpenter's boy. Yeah. And so when Jesus all of a sudden starts turning water into wine and feeding thousands of people and doing all these miracles, of course the people's mind are blown. Right. Because for 30 years, all they've known of Jesus that he is that he's just a carpenter. All right. All so right. how many years have people just known you as just whoever? Sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, that dude over there, yeah, that knucklehead over there, yeah. that person who can't get right. Mm. What are the names that people oh. have called you that have absolutely nothing to do with who God had called you? Oh, so right. God has called yeah. you to win, and he's called you to win at life. But understand, the only way I can win at life is you realize that where I am, does not define where I'm All right. right. Where you are does not define who you're going to be. Yes. So you call to win. You call to win in life. How we use our gifts for God's glory. Whatever gifting God has put in you, it's time for it to come out. That's right. Listen, we're talking total surrender. We're talking total surrender to God. We're talking, God, use me. Use my gifting. Lord, yes. I surrender yes. it all. Use yes. my life. Use my marriage. Use my family. Yes. That's the only way we're going to win at life. Yes. That's the only way we're going to win in life. Let's keep going, though. Let's go to point number two. How are we going to win? We're winning by faith. By faith. All right, right, we're going to go to Scripture now. I, I know y'all are just like, oh, man, Mr. Justin gave us enough Scripture yet. We're supposed to have some words. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, and let's start in verse number 32. And this is going to come up here on the screen. We're going to win by faith. Listen, as you travel on this road and you experience life, so many times you're going to get tested. We see it again in our story of Joseph. Back and forth he went, back and forth he went. The things that encouraged Joseph that kept him having his vision was the fact that he from time to time looked back and saw where God brought him. Mm -hmm. right. See, I just have a half a feeling that when Joseph looked into his brother's eyes, he realized they was about to kill him. Mm -hmm. He realized they was about to kill him. You can, you can see murder in a person's eyes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know how we say if looks could kill, right. somebody would just run right. out and die? Mm -hmm. So that tells me that you know when, when you get that look. I, as a parent, I, I try to look so hard on my children sometimes. I will give my children the look in a heartbeat. Right. And my son, my son, he knows what the look means. He's like, oh, 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 no. But my daughter, oh, no. She would throw a look right, right. back at me. She, 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 she tried her best to throw a look right, right, right back at me. I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to have to try to kill her just so she'll know what that look means. And she'll know how to behave. So, so in other words, the whole point of that is, if Joseph looked into his brother's eyes, saw that they was about to kill him, realized that God saved him by him going in that pit. Amen. Because I'm telling you, at the end of the day, being in a pit alive is a lot better than being in a grave dead. All right. right? All right. Everybody's just like, man, no, nah, no, nah, bro, just, just don't throw me and just kill me now. I guarantee you Potiphar gave Joseph a look. If, if Potiphar really believed that Joseph tried to rape his wife, then I'm sure it took the servants holding him back. Oh, you know, yeah. I trusted mm -hmm. you in my house. Right. I, I withheld nothing from you, and you did this to my wife? Yes. Ooh, we. And I think that while Joseph was sitting there in jail, he reflected back and he thought to himself, man, God saved me. And if God saved me then for my brothers, and he saved me from Potiphar, then I know he'll save me from this jail. Mm -hmm. I know that he's with me. So what does all that mean? Simply that in your life, you've probably went through some struggles. All right. All right. You've had some ups and you've had some downs. That's right. And if we remember by faith the times God persevered and brought, right, then we'll be encouraged when we find ourselves in a hard place. Yes. Yes. See, if yes. winning is victory, and victory means that I'm doing this by faith. Yes. All right. Victory means that I'm stepping out. But the only way I'm going to step out is if I remember the things in the past that God did yes. that encouraged me in the future. Yes. The things that happened to me in the past that enabled me to go forward in the future. Uh -huh. So maybe the job didn't work out quite the way I wanted to, but I still got paid yes. long enough to move on to the yes. next job that yes. God opened right. the door. Maybe it wasn't exactly the thing that I thought it was going to be, but God brought me to where I needed oh, to be. Yeah. Maybe my marriage, my first one didn't work out, but he then brought somebody else along and opened up a door. You have to see God in your situations yes. Yes. in yes. order that you might walk by faith. The Bible says it kind of like this. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Japheth, also David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith 
subdue kingdoms, mm -hmm. work righteousness, obtain promises, stop the mouths of lions. Now, all that right there, I'm just going to pause for a second. That just sounds like victory. <laughs> Don't that just sound like winning right here? Yeah. 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 Isn't that the kind of stuff that we pray for? Yeah. God, let me just close the mouth of the lion. Yeah. Or let me just let me just mm -hmm. subdue a kingdom or two. Yeah. Let me just come on. All right. Let's yeah. just keep reading. He says, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge yeah. of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of aliens. Women receive their dead raised to life again. And, we, and there's a pause right there for a reason. And we're going to pause right here for a reason. Listen, that's the kind of stuff that we all want to hear about. All right. Right. That's the kind of stuff that we want yeah. in our church. When we pray, that's what we're really praying for. God, Lord, Lord, this this, this, this is the kids' prayer right here. I'm, I'm going to say this, but I feel where y'all coming from. Lord, you know I didn't study for that test. But, um, I'm a, I'm a, you know what will happen if I don't bring a good grade home. Right. So I heard the material. Right. I mean, you said you would bring all bring things back, back to my mind. remembrance, yeah. Lord. Yeah. And what we're really praying is that every bubble we bubble will be the right answer. That's right. Okay, Lord, let me, I'll just take a minus one because, you know, I want them to think I cheated. Right. But that's what we're really praying. And so, so many times in our lives we're praying, God, Lord, you know I need a financial breakthrough. What we're really saying is, Lord, I need you to be an ATM. Right. Lord, I need you to I need you to deposit in the uh, Lord, 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 this lottery ticket. I'm mean, I'm just saying, this is an easy way. Come on. This is what we pray. We say, Lord, bless my marriage. God, God help my situation. What we're really saying is fix him. Fix him, Lord. Uh -huh. Fix her, Lord. Fix my children, Lord. Look, I need some angels. I might not have been an angel, but Lord, I don't deserve this. I wasn't that bad, Father. We pray, God, help me in my job. But we really saying is, Lord, make me boss. Right. So I can tell these people where to go. This is this is the stuff we think of. We want to quench the violence of fire. We want to escape the sword. We want to raise people. Back to life. Yeah, yeah, faith. Raw. But the part B of 35 says, others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still, others had a trial of mockings and scourging. Yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were tempted. They were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Mm. Well, there ain't as many amens right now. Yeah. And, and no amens right now. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm not amen to being stoned in two. You keep that. There's no amen to some goat skin and some sheep skin. And I know some of y'all like your little Ugg boots and everything, but I don't think that you want that all over your body. I mean, we, we not talking about, I don't want to be beaten. This is, this is the same paragraph which tells me it's the same faith that leads to two different paths. Now, it seems like it leads to two different paths, but at the end of the day, says, verse 38, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves and all these having obtained a good testimony through faith. And, no, that's good. Yep, thank you. Did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect. Mm -hmm. Which means that no matter the struggle or the situation that you go to, God is still with you. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. And, and what it really begins is it hints at the reality of the why. Mm -hmm. See, we, if we're going to win at life, we're going to have vision and perspective, it starts with the reality that this is not the end state. That's all right. Right. See, all right. this right here, what we're going through, isn't where it is. And this is why I can say where you are right now isn't where God intends for you to be. Because he's going to move you. He's on the process of always moving us up to the next level. Well, listen, sometimes the next level isn't here on earth. All right. See, sometimes for some of you, the next level is just going to be the heaven. God's going to take you wherever he may be. So you're going to struggle. You're going to end up in some of these places that aren't as fun. Mm. Aren't as kind. And I wish this wasn't here so I could just keep it with the top half and we could all just be praising God. All of the right. yes, Lord. All right. All right. But then I wouldn't do justice to the God of whom we serve because if you don't know what it is, then you'll never know what it is. Then you'll never know what it is. Then you'll never know what it is. Then 
never understand who he is. Right. And when you find yourself going through a circumstance in a situation like this, then your only response is, no, I don't want nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. You find yourself being more like Job's wife than Job, and you're like, you might as well just curse God and die. Mm -hmm. This is the advice that you start offering your friends when they're like, man, everything's falling apart. You're like, yeah, man, and ain't no God, so you might as well just figure it out, do whatever you got to do. Mm -hmm. Instead of being the voice over there that'll say to him, God is still with you in the midst of the situation and yeah. the circumstance. Why? Because you understand this for yourself. Mm -hmm. Because you've been there. See, there's two options to how we respond to life. We respond to it either with like, oh man, it just sucks, man. The world's going to the end. This is what we expect. Donald Trump's the president. It's just, it is what it is. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Or we can respond with, though you slay me, yeah, 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 yet I will you. I trust you. Oh, yeah. We can respond with, I've learned to be content yeah. in all things, no matter what I go with. That's we can right. respond eventually to the place where we're like Moses and we say, God, I don't need your hand. Mm -hmm. I want to see your face. Right. I want to come face to face with you. Yeah. So you can keep the gifts, so you can keep the good things in life. But if you'll let me know you for myself. Mm -hmm. If you'll bring me to a place. Now understand you can't come into the presence of God and pure, which means that he's got to work that thing out of you. Which means he's got to put you through the yeah. fire. Yeah. Which means he's got to purify you. Listen, when we really begin to think about why, why do we go through what we go through, why are we here? God is using this. Listen, you may not stay at the fellowship of Jesus Christ. You shouldn't think that this is your end state destination. If God intends to take you somewhere else, then go where the Lord intends for you to go. But understand that he's doing it for a purpose. Yes, he has the yes, three yes. Hebrew boys go into the fiery furnace so that they could be pure enough to walk in the presence of God. Because there, there was nothing else. They, there was complete, utter surrender. There was complete, utter, God, you are the only one. You are whom I trust. Oh, yeah. How many of us are willing to go through the fire to be where God is? How many of us are willing to hang out in the fire to be where God is? We all good with Lord. I'll walk across some coals right quick. God, I'll walk through the fire ring right quick. But how many of us are willing to go and just sit in the heat and just let God work it out of our situation when we turn up the heat a little bit and everything starts going to hell in a handbasket? When you turn up the heat a little bit and my bank account drops down to like zero? When you turn up the heat and the lights go out? When you turn up the heat and my husband or my wife leaves? When you turn up the heat and the situation gets real? Real, real crazy when we sit there and say, God, I trust you. All right. Come on. I have faith. Mm -hmm. No matter the situation. See, this is not the kind of sermon that people jump and shout and okay. <laughs> dance to. It's the kind of sermon some people put their money back in their pockets. <laughs> but I got to appreciate no matter what. Amen. Because it's my own Amen. story. Amen. Because I'm no stranger to the heat. Because I know that if you can get this understanding, you'll never doubt. All right. And you'll never doubt God. And so you'll keep writing those songs even though nobody's singing them. And you'll keep drawing those pictures even though nobody's singing them. And you'll keep doing what you like telling people about God. Even though it don't seem like nobody is doing it. And when you're when God when God brings you out, when he brings you out, and you're just that block of pure gold, and it just puts you up there. You'll be humble enough not to let it go to your head. All right. Mm -hmm. You'll be humble enough to just stay giving God the praise and the yes. glory. Because you'll know what you went through and what you got here. Yeah. Even nobody else ever saw you until you got here. When they come around talking about, oh, you're so awesome, you're so wonderful, you would be like, oh. Yes. All glory to God. No, sir. Don't put that on me. Right. That all belongs to God. Amen. Point number three, why do we win? How do we win? We win in community. Mm. We win in community. Listen, you can't win alone. Oh, hand -based. You can't win alone. It never works by trying to do it alone. The Bible too many times tells us that two or three are better than one by itself. That's right. Right? If one can put a thousand to flight, the Bible says two can put ten thousand to flight. That ain't even good math. Come on. <laughs> That's not even good math. Right, because real math, world math tells us that one can put one thousand, two can put two thousand, three we need ten. That's that's the multiplicative power of how God does things when it's you and somebody. He says when two or three are gathered, he'd be in the midst. He says it don't take a whole bunch. But where two or three are gathered together, he'll be in the midst. Every time you see a story, it's about a few doing more than just the yes, few. Yes, the yes. It's, it's always the few overcome the many. Why? Because that's just the way God works. That's right. Because that's the only way that he shows you that he was the one in there. Yes. If it's a million versus a million, and, and hey, this million beats the other million, well, you just, oh, yeah, they had a million soldiers. 
But if it's 300 versus a million and the 300 win, you know, ain't no way but God. That's right. Over uh, and over again, there ain't no way but right. God. That's right. Well, okay, so that becomes your story. That becomes your lifestyle. At the end of the day, how do you share that? Mm. How do you share that? See, everybody is good to share up here. We're good to share when we have a testimony. We're good to share when there's something God has done and he's blessed us with. We're good to share when the door just got opened and heaven's blessing us. And yes, here we go. What about when it's hard? Uh-oh. What about when it's hard? Mm -hmm. Listen, there's two words that I think we neglect so many times in the Christian faith that would change our whole perspective. Uh -oh. Me too. Uh -huh. Me too. Uh -huh. Me too. Come on. Mr. Justin, what you talking about? That doesn't even seem like that's biblical. Okay, here we go. You're struggling. You've got something going on. You've got a pain, a problem, a hurt, a sorrow. Mm -hmm. If I come alongside of you and I say, me too, how does that affect you? All of a sudden, you go from thinking that it's all about you, mm -hmm. that nobody cares, right. that nobody's ever been there, to realizing somebody else does. Oh, yeah. Realizing that you got a partner in this family. Yeah. Realizing that somebody yeah. else will come alongside and walk beside you. You don't understand the power of the words, me too. I'm going to show you this in the Bible. I'm going to show you this in just a minute. Listen. You are going to run this race. And there are going to be times when you are all by yourself. There ain't going to be nobody else around. But you're going to pray, God, help, help, help. And he's going to send you one other person. Oh, yeah. He's going to send you somebody else who will come alongside and say, me too. That's what community is. Mm -hmm. That's really the whole point of the church. That's really the whole point. Now, stop. Think about it. How many people are out there hurting? Mm -hmm. How many people are out there depressed? How many people are going through out there circumstances, situations that nobody knows and nobody has ever been told because they never felt like they had somebody who would right, say, me right. too. They never felt like they had somebody who would come alongside of them. And so they hold that burden inside and they carry that burden all by themselves day in and day out. Oh, I'm the only person to ever have problems with my spouse. Oh, I'm the only person to ever have problems with my finances. Oh, I just can't seem to learn this material in school. Oh, man, my dreams and stuff aren't coming through. So where are they not turning? They're not turning not to, God. to God. They have no reason to turn to God. Why? Because they have nobody who comes alongside them and oh, wow. says, me too. So let's look at this. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to go to verses 1 through 3. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3 says, Therefore we also, mm -hmm. since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, mm -hmm. let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endures such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your soul. Now, in the previous chapter, we looked at all the things that potentially can go wrong if you're walking this walk of faith. Right, and right. so the reality remains that if I'm going through those things and I'm, and I'm suffering and I'm struggling, I'm not doing it alone. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that there's a great cloud of many right. witnesses many who witnesses. surrounds us. Mm -hmm. And so many times we think, oh man, that's the stories that we find in the Bible. But in reality, that's the person on your left and right. Mm -hmm. so that's the person on your left and right. And this is why it matters that you allow God to use your gifting for his glory. Because every single time you let God use your gifting for his glory in the workplace, in your neighborhood, in your community, wherever you may be that's outside the church, it then causes you to be a cloud of witness for the people around you. Oh, sure See, you don't know the people out there who are either saved, who are thinking about being saved, who have heard the word of God at one point in time and fallen away, but they need a light. Somebody to come alongside and offer them some support. Somebody to come alongside and offer them a word. Somebody whose lifestyle says, me too. Mm -hmm. I've been there in the struggle. Mm -hmm. I will help you going forward. He says, lay aside every way. Lay it aside. Let it go and know that if you can't lay it aside, you got a battle buddy on your left and your right who will help you out. Now, battle buddies is a military term. We use it all the time. You'll never go somewhere without your battle. Got your battle on your left, got your battle on your right. You always, hand in hand, at least two, wherever we go. Why? You always got somebody to cover your back. That's right. Well, it's kind of funny because the Bible says if you have, where don't go by yourself. If, if where two are, if one falls, the other can pick them up. That's right. Right? If where two are, if one gets cold, they can like lay together and Come it keeps on. you warm. 
right? The Bible says these things, and then here we go in the military applying it. Hey, have a battle buddy everywhere you go. Have somebody to watch your back. Have somebody to cover you where you move. So why as Christians do we think we can do it by ourselves? Oh, We've got the Bible telling us to do it, and then we know that we're in the midst of warfare. Do you not think you need a prayer tonight? Do you not think you might need somebody to cover your back, somebody to encourage you? Well, the only way that's ever going to happen is if you're all physical. Mm -hmm. The only way it's ever going to happen is if you're open, you're willing to share with somebody your struggle, you're willing to share with somebody what's going on with you, you're willing to share with somebody that you need help. We're going to the next one, Mark chapter 14, verse 32. Listen, Jesus did it. Jesus did it. Jesus got him 12 somebodies. <laughs> he got him 12 disciples who were willing to work with him. He had him an inner circle three disciples who we knew he could count on in the clutch, or so we thought. Because here Jesus finds himself in the moment of his greatest turmoil, the moment of his greatest faith, the moment of his greatest moment of struggle. Mm -hmm. They came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he says to his disciples, sit here while I pray. Mm -hmm. So he tells the nine of them, stay right here. Yeah. Verse 33 says, he took Peter, James, and John, his inner circle, with him, and be he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. And he said to them, my soul is exceedingly mm -hmm. sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. All right. yes. So, so let's, just, let's just set the stage for a minute. We know what's about to go on. Judas has already left. Really, right. it was number 11, sorry. Mm -hmm. Judas has already left to go betray him. The, the, nine, the eight disciples are hanging out, praying, supposed to be. Jesus takes his inner three. The Bible says he began to be sorrowful as he considered the magnitude of the moment. All right. He considered what he was about to do. This is the moment before Jesus enters into the passion. This is the moment before he's betrayed. He knows the betrayal's coming. Right. He knows who it's coming from. But still, the idea that I walk with you for three years and you're still going to turn my your back on me? Like, like it, it's bad enough when it happens and we don't know. All right. If you were married to somebody, you could look at them and just know that in three years they were going to have an affair. Like, and, and yet you still marry that person. And yet and you're still walking and now it's the evening before they come to break the news. Or you were going to work at a job for three years and then lose it all. Your 401k, your employment, your benefits, and you was going to get dogged out. There's no possible way that we would be like we're going to go through it. But yet he did. And so he finds himself here three years of work. Three years for this moment. Oh, yeah. Well aware of his why. Completely understanding that my sole purpose is dying. And yet, at this moment, his soul is exceedingly sorry, mm -hmm. even to death. death. But he's not alone. So he says to his battle buddies, stay, stay here and watch. All right. Stay here and watch. And that's great, right? Because that's the whole mm -hmm. purpose of having battle buddies. Mm -hmm. Let's read the story a little further. Verse 35, he went a little further, fell to the ground and prayed, if it's possible, this hour might pass from him. He says, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Mm -hmm. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but your will. Okay, so we know Jesus, again, is no different than us. Right, right. So many times we, we, we are faced with these things God's calling us to do. Let somebody go out of our life. Don't pursue the person who went out of our life. Like, go ahead and do the things God. Forgive somebody. So many times the thing holding us back is unforgiveness. We just oh, won't forgive. Like, and, and God is like, you need to forgive me. You're like, no, I can't forgive him, Lord. You're like, you need to forgive him, God. You don't know what they did to me. That's I right. do know what they did to you. Yeah. I ain't gonna go he says, I will follow all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. I don't want to drink this. This is not play. This is Jesus just keeping it 100. He's talking to God. He's like, Lord, then you're the only one. Please. But he says, nevertheless, not my not will, my but will. Your, will. your will. Your will. Keep up against this wall, up against the hardest place in his life, Yay. up against something that seems insurmountable. The idea that you will take on the sins of the world, the idea that you will have to carry this. This is not healing people. This is not, this is the ultimate of all ultimate betrayals. People who you've healed, people who you've cared about are about to send you to the cross. Verse 37. Then he came and found them sleeping. Mm -hmm. And said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not yeah, watch, watch one hour? hour? Mm -hmm. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Listen, listen so you're, you're praying, God, please. 
you come back where your boys are supposed to be praying with you, mm -hmm. encouraging you, mm -hmm. covering you, yeah. and they all see. Knocked out. This your crew. Mm -hmm. Simon, the one you said, I'm going to build the church on you. Simon, the one who got out and walked on water. Simon, the one who said, you are the king, come on, come on. the Messiah, Jesus. Simon, sleep. Yeah. Knocked out. Passed out. Mm. Dreaming. I guess they had too much wine at the, yeah. at the last yeah. supper or something. Because yeah. Simon, like, oh. Like they <laughs> Can you hear? Can you hear it in Jesus' voice? Battle. Battle, you sleep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. And I know, I know that, that, that thought because. In the army, sleeping is a terrible thing when you're supposed to be on duty. <laughs> All right. When you're supposed to be on guard duty, don't sleep. Like that's just the one time you can't sleep. Any other time, I don't care. You 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 can be riding along, you pass out, you wake up, oh man. Mm. <laughs> that's a good man. Right. That's fine. Everybody else is running around doing things in the base, you finish cleaning your weapon, you fall asleep. Okay, I'll give you a pass on that. But don't be sleeping at night. When is guard duty? No hamburgers. Especially if all you got for guard duty is one hour. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. I don't care how tired you are. Mm -hmm. You better, you better stand up. Life. You better <laughs> slap yourself a little bit. You better splash some water in your face. You better do some push ups and some sit ups. You do something. Do Stay not away. let me come through checking the line and find you sleep. All right. I will lose my mind Ooh. faster than anything else. And so I understand where Jesus is coming from when he says, Peter, sleep. Mm. Could you not? That prayer wasn't that long. I don't think it was an hour. Jesus, verse 39 says, and again he went away and prayed, and he spoke the same words. Father, take this cup if possible, not my will, but yours be done. And when he returned, he found them asleep again. again. Oh, boy. For their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer. Mm -hmm. They didn't know what to say. Jesus like, Really? Like, can you imagine his voice just went up a little bit? Like, really? <laughs> Come on, bro. Verse 41 says, then he came the third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? It's enough. It's, we're done. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See my betrayers. Jesus is like, okay, let's get it. Okay. Clearly, clearly we're not praying. Clearly I'm not getting this answer. Right. Clearly I'm about to go into and do this. Jesus wanted somebody to say me too. Mm, bless Jesus me. wanted somebody who would say me too. Mm. Jesus wanted somebody who understood what struggle meant in the moment. Jesus wanted somebody who understood sorrow in their soul. Jesus wanted somebody who understood disappointment and frustration and was willing to say, Jesus, I might can't take what you're doing, but I'll pray along with you. See, sometimes it's not necessarily the word me too. Sometimes it's the action me too. Oh, Lord, I can't do what you're doing, but what you ask of me is what I will do. Yeah. So many times we're not even willing to do the things that God has asked us to do. That's all he's He's not asking you to put a million dollars in your bank account. He's saying, will you trust me for me to put a million dollars yeah. in your bank account? He's not asking you to make all my money for us to move to a new building. He's asking, will you trust me to do what I ask you to do so I can move you to a new building? He's not saying you have a worthy perfect children. He's saying, when my word says discipline your child, will you discipline your child? Will you love your spouse? Will you treat those the way you want to be treated? That's over right. and over and over again. God is asking for people who say, me too. Oh, oh But he's saying, say yes. 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 me too, brothers. Mm. In the story of Job, Job wanted someone who was saying, me too. Job had everything. Life was good. Everything was going well. And then Job lost everything. Mm -hmm. And he got his three friends who came around and said, you did something. Wow. He said, you messed up. He said, you're the reason you're going through these circumstances mm -hmm. and situations. Job needed somebody to come along and say, you know what, brother? I don't know why you're going through what you're going through. But I'm with you. Yes, I'll yes, sit yes. right here and I'll mourn with you. I'll sit right here and I'll pray with you. I'll sit right here and I'll encourage you that even though we can't figure out why, God is still in control. Oh, yeah. We oh, have trusted God all these years. We are not going to give up in the midst of this situation going bad. Job needed community that was authentic. Mm. 
Yeah. Job needed people around him that were authentic. Job needed people who had been through a situation yes. or a storm mm -hmm. who could say, God brought me through it. I know he'll bring you through it as mm -hmm. well. This is the whole entire point of community. What's community? Community means authenticity. Community means openness. Community means I tell it and I share it the way it is. I don't sugarcoat it. I don't make it pretty. I don't try to be something that I'm not. Community means no mask. So many times in church, we wear masks. We do. Yes. It makes yes. absolutely no yes. sense to me why we wear masks, but we wear masks. Now, you're like, oh, no, Minister Justin, you see this face right here is pure. I've always been this beautiful. No, I'm not talking about your face, darling. I'm talking about the clothes that you put on when you come in. And you're like, yes, Lord, it's good. Look what he blessed me with. I'm talking about the attitudes that you bring in where you're like, yes, everything is perfect. Nothing is ever wrong with me. Be and keep it 100 with people for once. You done been through some things. You done struggled through some things. You done had somebody cheat yeah. on you. You done had somebody leave you. That's you done right. had some broken yeah. You done had some broken hearts. Why? Because everybody out there in the world is going through the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because you're not alone. The difference is that you serve God. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. That you oh, and they don't. And when people begin to realize that hope can be found not in being perfect, not in making it, that you can have an addiction but still have hope, that you can be broke but still have hope, that you can go through some things but still have hope, that they'll come and be a part of this community. Community means honesty and love. Community means if I see something, I say something. That's right. And we love each other enough. And even though it might make you offended, even though you might get mad, yet even though you don't want to talk to me for at least another couple of days, All right. that don't change the fact that we're still in community. Yeah. And I'm willing because I know you love me. Yes. And I'm willing because I know if the shoes were flipped that I could speak into your life and it'd be okay to give consideration of what you said and to really think about whether or not it applies. That's what community means. Community means honesty and love. Community means forgiveness. Yes. Yes. Because see, I don't always want to hear what you got to say. And sometimes what you got to say is going to be wrong. And sometimes you're going to look at my situation, but because you're on the outside, you think one thing. Mm -hmm. And then when you say it now, I'm offended and I don't want to hear what you got to say. But community means that I'll forgive you because I know that your heart is really in a good place. Yes. And yes. that you're really just trying to share with me. And that you really love me enough. And I know that the odds are good that even if I don't do it back to you, there's a chance that I'll do it to somebody else. And I'm going to hope that they'll forgive me. Community means we love each other enough to forgive each other. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yes. this is a place of purity. This is a place of love. This is a place where people can be who they are. And the only person making a change is Christ. Community equals hope. Mm. Community equals hope. Why is the fellowship here? What does winning look like? Winning looks like hope. All right. For some people, they don't have hope. They're just going through day after day. Yes, they're yes, not even yes. hopeful that the day. They're just like, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't expect anything good to happen. Mm. Nothing good ever happened. Why should I expect that to change? Mm. Something bad is probably going to happen in the next five minutes. Mm. Oh, yep, yeah, exactly what I thought. Something yeah. bad was going to happen. The glass is never half full. The glass is always three-quarter empty. My tank's always empty. My bank account's always empty. They have no hope. But the community... Hope. That's yes. The community offers them a place that they can turn to. Because yes. community offers them somebody who'll say, Me too. Mm -hmm. Community right. offers them somebody who'll say, I've been there. That's community right. offers them yeah. somebody who says, I'll walk with you yes. in what you're going through. Oh, community offers them somebody who'll say, I'll go with you. I may not share this addiction, but I'll walk with you because I was addicted to something once upon a time. I found oh, myself putting things Jesus. before God once upon yes. a time. He yes. broke me of that, and I understand where you're at, so I can say, Me too, and walk with you. Yes. Community equals hope. Community says there's a place for you. So many times people don't want to come to church because they feel like they don't have a place. There's no role for their gifting. Oh, well, I, I draw really good. I'm a great tattoo artist. There's no role for that in the church. You don't know. That's right. Mm -hmm. God can use anyone else. You say, all my life I've done this, that, and the third. All my life I've dressed provocative. All my life I've done this thing, that thing. All my life I've focused on physical fitness and being the strongest person. There's no place in the, in the church for that. There is a place for that. Right. There is a place for people with fashion sense. There is a place for people who want to do things with their body. Yes. There is a place for people who yeah. do things. Yeah. Guarantee yeah. the experiences and things that you went through, oh God did it for you to come and bring it to the community. Oh, that's oh, right. Because yeah. community is hope. Oh, this yes. community points to the anchor that is Christ. Yes. See, everything that we do is anchored in Christ. Yes. Everything that we do is anchored in the moment that comes next when Christ is at the cross. Amen. That's what we turn back to. 
That's the place where all of this goes back to. Because at the cross, God forgave it all. Oh, yes. At the cross, God says, it's okay. At the cross, God says, no matter what you struggle with, I still love you. I'm still with you. I still carry you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. At the cross, Jesus spread his arms and he welcomed all of us. And so the point is not that you have to do it of yourself. It's that you can point them right back to the cross. You can say, I might struggle with this. This is really hard for me. I never walk hand in hand with somebody like this. But I know a God who said that you are welcome. And I know that I have my struggle and you have your struggle. And that means that he loves us equally. Community points back to the cross. Community is where God felt betrayal. Community is where God felt separation and loss. Community is where we, we have people who, who will lose children and they'll be like, God, you don't understand. And God says, you don't understand. My child went to the cross and we were separated. Yes. Oh, my who I had loved for 33 years. My son who I opened up the heavens and sent the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. I had to turn my back on him. Yes. He says, I do no loss. That's right. He says, you're not alone, but, he, but they'll never hear that unless they hear it from you. Come on, have mercy. never get that unless they get that from the community. All right. See, the community, the fellowship mm. where God's taking us, you got to understand this is foundational. It's here for a reason. You're here for a reason. Listen, so that you know that we're doing community. So that you don't see somebody who's struggling and say, uh, I'm not talking to them. That's right. So you don't pass by a, a, a prospective opportunity when you could have reached out to somebody and showed the love of Christ and brought them in and allowed them to grow and allowed yes. yourself to grow. Understand, every interaction with somebody who's different from you is a chance for you to grow. Oh, yeah. Every interaction with somebody who's struggling with something that you're not is a chance for you to learn a lesson so that yes. you don't have to experience that thing. Every single interaction and every single Ooh. thing that you go through, God allows it to happen. Ooh. So that we can say me too. Come on. So that we can say me too. Come on. We're talking about community. We're talking about why. Why am I here? Why did I go through what I went through? Why all the tipping points? Why the pers why the need for perspective and vision? So that we can be an authentic community. So that God can blow us up. Understand that hospitals don't exist if there's no sick people. Right, right, right. Hospitals don't exist if there's no sick people. So the reality means that the church is here as a hospital for sick people. Yes. And for the purpose of bringing them in well. So God's going to bring in people who are sick, who are hurting. And if you're not at a place where you can share your struggle with them, if you're not at a place where you can say, no, things aren't good today, I am struggling, I've been through, and give them a chance to understand, you know, man, wow, I, I just expected you to say God is good and he's in control as usual. Come on, come on. What kind of place is this? This is so totally different from anything I've ever experienced. All right. Yes, you're right. This is real. This is true. This is the fellowship with Jesus Christ. Are we fellowship with Jesus Christ? Where we walk hand in hand with them. Where we're authentic, where we're real, where we keep it 100 with you. We don't sugarcoat it. Mm -mm. We just on. call it like it is. On, if it's sin, we're going to say it's sin. Right. If yeah. it needs to be fixed, we're going to say it's we be right. fixed. If it's right, we're going to celebrate it. <laughs> Winning means I remember this right here is temporary. Mm -hmm. Winning means I remember this right here is temporary. Why am I here? I'm here to win. How do I win by remembering this is temporary? Amen. Amen. This right here is temporary. Listen, at the end of the day, I'm just, I'm just going to keep it 100 with you. This, this is my personal belief. This is, this is just me, but I think it's biblical. John 14, 6 tells us that Jesus says to his disciples, like, go to prepare a place. I'll come back and get you, yeah. and I'll take right. you there. Yeah. Which means that no matter what I accomplish here on earth, it will always pale in comparison to what's going to be in yeah. the that thought process, why am I storing up now for what, what I can't take to heaven? That's right. Why am I wasting my time trying to work in a job to get X amount of money so that I can live X amount of life knowing that it pales in comparison to heaven? Why am I missing out on the opportunity and the gifting to walk in what God has called me to? It is just my personal thoughts. It's just my personal thought. Don't, don't, don't let my thought influence yours unless your spirit resonates with mine. Mm. And if you spend enough time thinking about, oh, my 401k, got to have X amount of thousands Come of dollars. On. If you're sitting there thinking, oh, my gosh, I got to have this size house in order to live nice. Oh, my gosh, I got to have the newest car and the newest clothes. If that's what you're chasing, you're missing out on God. Oh, God. You're missing out on 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 God. You're
I do it again. It's not pretty. I get it. People don't get excited when you preach like this. But I'm just going to keep it 100 with you. God has something he wants to do in your life. But as long as you are putting everything else above what God wants to do in your life, then you will, he will never use you. He's not going to fight you over it. He's not. If you're like, Lord, well, you understand. When I get to this amount of my bank account, then I'll go ahead and do it. Okay. So be it. He's not going to sit there and fight you over it. That's just not the way he is. Yes, you were struggling. Listen, I'll, I'll tell my, some of my wife's testimony because I, I, I can. We won. It is what it is. There were times in my wife's life when she was younger when she was homeless. So she just, like, they lived in a shelter. It was what it was. But out of that grew the mindset that a certain amount of money in the bank account meant that she would never be homeless. All right. right. It did. And that became a thing for her. A very important thing for her. See, the number in the bank equaled security. Right. The number in the bank meant she would never be home. Right. The number in the bank meant that she could then go ahead and do what God wanted uh -huh. her to do. Right. So when we got married, she had that number in the bank. She was excited about it. Life was good. We were good. She didn't realize what right married a preacher meant. <laughs> Because I took that number and said that you made this into an idol. Uh -oh. You have put this above me. And so there came a point in the time where she had to empty this bank account in order to walk where God had called her to walk. Oh, all right. Now, I'm sure it was not easy. It wasn't something she was happy about. Okay. Time and time again, she tried to put a little bit more. A little trickle would come and she'd be like, yeah, we starting to feel good. And he said, give me that too. And she was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And we would go through the same cycle over and over and over again of where she got a little bit. And he said, give it to me. And she was like, no. And he got a little bit. And she said, give it to me. He's like, no. Over and over and over again until she finally got it. Until she finally realized that it's not about this number where her security is. That it's about God being her security. It's about her living and walking the life. So listen, some of you have that same thing. It may not be a number in the bank. It may be a bigger number in your 401k. Okay. Or it may be something else. Who knows? I don't know. It may be the pair of shoes that you have to wear. It may be a look that you cultivate. It may be having your nails done or your hair done. Or it may be doing whatever it is. It's your security blanket and it's not God. All right. It's oh, not God. God. And so when you find yourself in turmoil, struggling to achieve or pursue this one thing, instead of realizing that at the end of the day, mm. All that effort should be putting it where God That's right. should be in pursuit of God. And we wonder, why am I not blessed? Why am I not happy? Why am I not having reached and arrived at what it is that I wanted to do? God, I know you're gifted. I don't get why I'm working here, but I'm just not satisfied. Why would you be satisfied if you're not serving God? See, if you're not saved, then this doesn't matter to you. If you're not saved, the rules are different. But if you're saved and you claim Jesus Christ is your Lord, Yet you're over here wondering why my situation is not working out. I guarantee you at the end of the day it starts because you've not made him in your own. Oh, have mercy. At the end of the day it starts because you've not put God first. Mm. At the end of the day it's because you're not willing to walk in that. Whatever you went to school for, whatever it is that God's put inside of you, if you're not using it here, here doesn't necessarily mean the fellowship. But if you're in the fellowship, yes, it means the fellowship. All right, all right. If you're not putting what you learn, what he's sent you through, what he's put you into here, then you're never going to arrive at what God wants you to do. Okay. Everything that you're pursuing out there in the world will always turn to ashes and yes, ashes and dust. Yes, yes, And it will just pass away. It will fade away. You will wonder why you're never successful. You'll think to yourself, yes, I finally arrived. Look at my big house. Hello, 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 hello. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Finally. Man, look at my 100 inch projector TV screen over there. Yeah, look at my closet full of all these red bottom shoes on a revolving, rotating basis. Yeah, it's got $100,000 worth of shoes right there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm awesome. Look at all these followers on Instagram. Yeah, look at my tweeter. Every time I tweet, it just tweets out and people follow me. Tweet, 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 tweet. Yeah. I'm so great. I'm so awesome. I'm so mighty. Boy, all right. So why do I feel? So, 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 right. so, right. so frustrated. Mm -hmm. Was really the pursuit of all this enough? No. Listen, winning means realizing this. This ain't it. Temporary. Mm -hmm. This is temporary. Young up, young up. This will pass away. Yes. yes. It doesn't yes. matter. You can't take it with you. There's Shana. not a single thing. No matter how tight you squeeze on the moment that you die, the $100 bill is going to dissolve along with the rest of you six okay. months after you buried in the ground. Amen. 
It doesn't matter what you write in your will and say, nobody's ever going to get my money. I'm keeping it till I come back as another person. Never coming back. Money's gone. It don't matter. It don't matter. It does not matter. But if you put your work in God, that's right. If you put your heart in this oh, hand, that's right. you hide yes, yourself in yes, him, yes. you will experience satisfaction and fulfillment beyond yes. what you can even begin to imagine. You will come to know God on a level that you've never yes. begun to imagine. Yes. Your life will literally be yes. in tune with the creator of all things in such a way that no matter your circumstance and your situation, you will literally speak to it and say, peace be still. Listen, yes. listen this is the end. My wife knows beyond a shadow of a doubt that God will just make a way that she needs it. That's right. Amen. It's so funny. We'll just be sitting there and I'll be like, listen, listen, why are you struggling right now? She's like, I just, I, I just want to get my hair done. I'm like, then go get your hair done. We'll have the money. I'm like, then ask God for it. I don't know. And then she get a check. <laughs> and I'll be like, are you going to get your hair done? Oh, no. Oh, my God. What is the point? God doesn't want you to just be nappy headed wandering around. Like, oh, oh God. That's right. Yeah, God is good. That's not what He intends. But He intends for you to trust Him. To trust him. He yes. intends for you to take a step of faith yes. without actually yes. seeing it happen. Yes. Understand, Peter had to step out of the boat in order to walk on water. Yes. He, didn't, he didn't get to walk on water while being in the boat. He right. had to step out of the boat to walk right. on that water. Yes. Understand that when the children of Israel got ready to go into the promised land, they had to step into the Jordan River. Right. The Bible says that the river was it was flowing, it was flooding, it was overflowing the bank. It was the torrent. 15,000 feet up in the mountains was where it started coming, rushing down, all the melted snow. Joshua was like, oh God, you told Moses to part the Red Sea from where he was dry. You telling me I got to step in the water? God was like, exactly, so you'll know who I am. And so I'll know I can trust you. And he's saying to you, step into the Jordan River. Take a step and do something. Yeah. He said, you yeah. God's put inside of you. What's the reason or purpose that you're here? Yeah. Step out there in all faith. Oh, have mercy. Just take a step. Amen. Just walk in it. Don't expect to know all the answers. Take a step. Okay, God, what's next? Okay. Oh, wait a second. You just parted this sea. Well, clearly, that's what's next. Trust God. Listen, we're here to win. That's it. Are you victorious? Are you going to win? Are you excited about community and what God's going to do? Yes. Are you excited about where God's taking us? Like I said, this right here, but just for a short, short time. It's just but for a short time. We're about to step into great things. We're about to walk into great things. And I hope that you're ready. I hope that you'll come along with us. Come on with us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes.